I didn't murder Simon. You've got it wrong. You've got the wrong person. I'd like to speak to the lawyer now. Please. You have no murder weapon. You have nothing. And all these stories we've been telling each other. Just that. Stories. Speak to the lawyer now. Please. You have no murder weapon. You have nothing. And all these stories we've been telling each other. Just that. Stories. No murder weapon. <laughs> Hmm. 
Simon, Simon Smith. He works at Ernst Brothers Glass. They do windows, all kinds of glass. Simon does the more special work, mirror making, feature windows, artistic things, really beautiful things. Um, Simon is six foot, darkish blonde hair, average build. Um, he's clean shaven. <laughs> if his beard grows, it goes ginger, so he shaves it. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with ginger hair. Uh, and bought a photo instead of spring photo. This was taken last year on holiday in Rome. It's the best one I have. It's the Rockington Arms, The Rock. It's run by a nice couple, Peter and Susan. There's some other regulars there that Simon likes to drink with, and the barmaid they're having sometimes, Helen. Peter said Simon had been in and had a few drinks. Yes, there's an Amstrad one. No one uses it for very much. There's a printer so you can write letters on it. Simon sometimes plays games, you know, climb the tower, save the princess, that kind of thing. Obviously. Simon isn't the type to run off or do anything crazy. Someone must have done something to him or there must have been some kind of accident. So what do we do next? When I was eight, mother died. She slipped down the stairs. It was an accident. I had read a diary at that point and I knew she wasn't my real mother. So I burned the diary that day and I left. Walked out and across the street. Thanks. No sugar. Sweet enough as it is. My name is Hannah. H A N N A H. It's Pamandre. It reads the same backwards as forwards. It doesn't work from Eric though, it's not quite symmetrical, but well, I mean, you get the idea. Sorry. Hannah Smith, I live at 31 Gladstone Street. A mobile phone? Yeah. Well, they have one for the glaciers, but it's only for work. I can't remember the number. Oh, it's in the kitchen. I saw it plugged into its charging cradle.
Yes, my name is Hannah Smith. Oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry. Across the road, where my parents first lived there, was a midwife called Florence. When Hannah was born, I was born at the same time. The midwife was there to help. I'd been throttled by the cord, probably wrapped around my neck by Hannah. The midwife told my mother I was dead. But I wasn't. She wrote all this stuff in a diary. Amazing what people will admit to on paper. She recognised me from the window. She told me to come inside and she hid me. They had made the attic into a place where Hannah could play. It was a dollhouse. She hid me up there. No one else ever went into the attic. It was her place. Well, my friend Eve. I mean, she was a friend from when I was a kid. And she was always more popular with the boys, and I used to hate her for it. I mean, really hate her sometimes. Yes, we'd fight. We fought on the beach once and I held Eve's head underwater. There was no one else around. It was at the far end of the beach. And I held her head under and I kept it out. And for a moment, I just wanted to kill her and watch her drown. But that was it. It was just a moment. We made up afterwards. <laughs> it was a love hate relationship. A police station. Yeah. When I was young, we ran away on my birthday. Bob Dylan was playing in London and we thought we could break into his tour bus and have him take us with him. The taxi driver we paid to drop us off. I mean, we'd save money, pinched a bit here and there to pay for the fare. He was suspicious because we were so young, so he told the police. So they came and picked us up and took me back to Portsmouth. My mum picked me up in the station. But I blamed everything on my friend Eve. My parents let me off. My mother called me Eve. Since she was locked up, since like from young age, 
that's why she. I I don't know which mom she's talking about right now. And she pushed yeah. her mom. When I was at school, the I worked part time in the front shop. It was sort of an extended family thing. My dad used to work there. My mom worked there before I was born. I took care of paperwork, filing, typing out invoices, that kind of thing. It was a good job for a girl back then. I didn't work a till or anything. Though. I was quite shy, so I wouldn't have liked to have worked a till. She has a bruise on her eye, around her eye. We couldn't afford our own place. Simon dropped out of school, went full time at the Glaziers. That was Eric's generosity. We moved in with his mum and dad. They had a spare room for us and the baby if it came. It was a nice change, time to myself, living there for those months, full of hope. It was after dinner. I had spoken to Simon's parents on the phone. I looked up for an early night and I suddenly had this thought. I think it was something his mother had said. She'd been speaking about old stuff, sad stuff, about when we lived there, about the baby. There's some boxes in the cellar, nursery stuff, stuff we never needed. And I never had the heart to throw out. And I suddenly remembered that when I'd looked down there the week before, those boxes, that pile was in the wrong place. I went cold all over. I went down there with a torch and went straight to the back. And that's when I saw the bin bags. Pulled them open. Saw the body. What? I screamed and that's when I called the police. Okay, she found this is on June 27. Whose body was it? I'm confused. Is that her son? Mum and Dad had never had any reason to notice. They were always busy. If Hannah was eating a lot, they didn't mind, she didn't put on any weight. That girl has a healthy appetite. Um, if they heard us talking in the attic, they just thought it was Hannah playing one of her games. And that Eve was our imaginary friend. <laughs> Once, she was already up and dressed and ready to go to school and I snuck down for a piss. Mum saw me in my underwear, she went mad. Get dressed this instant. So I ducked into our bedroom. And seconds later, out came Hannah, dressed and ready. My mum was amazed. Why is she talking about herself in third person? But her mom used to call her and eat. Thing was wrong. But why is she dressed? The bags. I, I think they were from my kitchen. You can probably check that. We're never going to the cellar. It's just a place we put things we don't need. My dad used to grow mushrooms there. The, the bags were taped up. I think it was parcel tape, but I think it was ours. about her mom mom's dead body no they were shut most of the windows are really hard to open anyway it's stifling in summer they were painted over by my dad could have left a door open accidentally 
was a cat flap in the back door. They said it was food poisoning. There was something in the food they ate. My dad liked to pick mushrooms, grow them too. They said it was the mushrooms. It was hard to believe. Death caps. They have a skirt around the cap. My dad taught me that. But, I mean, the police had no reason to think it was suspicious. They lived alone and no one had any reason to hurt them. He was wearing um, a shirt with a blue turtleneck shirt and jeans. He has a watch, it's a really nice one, that was a gift from his boss, Eric. Mm, he had his coat, a long grey duffel coat, like Paddington Bear, but he would have taken that with him, it's not in the house. So, was his name is Eric. So, it was Friday evening, we had an argument, he left. On Saturday he didn't come back, I waited all day. He was supposed to go help Eric out with something on the Saturday afternoon, they had a job, but he didn't show. So Eric was ringing on the phone. I checked at The Rock, that's our local. They said they'd seen him on the Friday night, but not since. He still wasn't back this morning, which just isn't like him at all. Still not back by dinner time. It's getting dark again, so I decided to come see you. His parents haven't heard anything either. Yes, there's a car that we share, a Cavalier, and a van he uses for work. It's owned by Eric, but we look after it. Both of them are there now, parked in the street. I'm not sure about the keys for the van. I can look for you when I get back. Yes, that would be in his wallet. It's a Visa, a silver one. He doesn't like to spend money he doesn't have, so he usually pays with cash, but Eric convinced him to get one. Well, Eric was like an uncle to him. They were pretty close. They spend a lot of time with each other, especially when they have to go to conferences. He met his wife, Diane. two days. How did her bruise go away? went away in two days because like on 27th one she looked completely fine but this one was 25th yeah we were 17 it was a nice wedding people said Simon looked very handsome in the photos his parents paid for everything but he's an only child so it was important to them it was what they called a shotgun wedding, but if you looked at the photos, you couldn't tell. The dress was beautiful. It looked like Princess Diana's. <laughs> the chain wasn't quite as long, though. There's a great photo of the bridesmaid helping to carry it out of the car. <laughs> There were always princes and princesses. They were the special people, more important than the other characters in their stories. We knew we were like that. Twins, magical. We were the princesses. We had a post on Princess Diana from the newspaper up in our attic. Had a pride of place. 
And underneath we used to put all our special things. When her engagement was announced, we were obsessed with everything she did. And later, when her life went so bad, we felt for her. Her divorce last year just kind of drew a line under things. I don't think she got to, Diana got divorced in before 1940. What is this? I guess you could call it that, but we were both, both happy to get married. It was a beautiful wedding. <laughs> we had our first dance to come back and stay. I'm not sure if that's a good wedding song, but I loved it. I chose it. I mean, it was genuinely our first dance. We'd never danced together before. It was probably awful to watch, but I enjoyed it. It felt like it was just me and Simon for that moment. Just the two of us. We spent the wedding night in a hotel in Brighton. It would have been too much to do more. We were saving for the baby. It was wonderful to be in a hotel, away from home, just alone together. Since then, we've always tried to get away for our holiday. Yeah, that's Simon's watch. It was a gift from Eric. He got it this year. It was a wedding anniversary gift. Steel. It would have been Diane who chose it. She has really nice taste. That time, you must eliminate me. I was in Glasgow then. Yeah, that's Simon's watch. It was a gift from Eric. He got it this year. It was a wedding anniversary gift. Steel. It would have been Diane who chose it. She has really nice taste. That time, you must eliminate me. I was in Glasgow then. The parents decided there would be a wedding. And after the wedding, Hannah moved in with his parents. There was no way I could follow. So we were separated again. I stayed in the attic. It was hard. It was like I suddenly didn't exist. I don't know. I would sneak out, but in case anyone recognised me, I started wearing a wig. Hannah and I would meet up in the park. Talking I was trying to get pregnant. But I couldn't. I mean, I couldn't do it with anyone we knew, so it was sex with strangers. Drunk guys I'd met in clubs, in parks, in alleyways. I was 17. It felt like I was being punished. But it was Hannah who had betrayed us. I had to stop when one of the guys gave me an STD. When we met up, it was disturbing. For the first time, my reflection, she didn't look like me. 
She was fatter, flushed. If anything, I was getting skinnier. I had a hearty look sometimes. We talked about what to do. Was it time to become our own people? I mean, that seemed like the right thing to do, but neither of us wanted it. We agreed that her and Simon would get their own place as soon as possible, and then I could move in. And that was the plan. really nice. She helps out with the glaziers, organises the Christmas party, that sort of thing. They have two kids, really sweet kids. She used to look out for me when I worked there. He would go to the pub. He had his drinking buddies there, but no one ever really came back to the house. Sometimes Eric, his boss, and his wife would come over for dinner. That would be us returning the favour. Diane is a really good cook, into her trendy ingredients. And the last time Simon cooked something off Master Chef, he got the recipe off Seafax, and I did my Lloyd Grossman bit, commenting from the sidelines. I had to find fennel from the supermarket. Have you ever eaten fennel? Are Simon and Eric arguing? No, I can't imagine they'd be arguing. And they get on so well. Unless it was something to do with work. Maybe Simon was being too much of a perfectionist. But, she is Erica too. drugs. I mean, he drinks, but never very much. He goes to the pub and has one or two. Sometimes we go together. He drinks wine with food, but no, he doesn't have any kind of drinking problem. At the time they said it was poison, food poisoning. I mean, I felt so guilty. If I'd still been at home, maybe I could have done something. But... Strange would be, but he hasn't been acting odd. He's been busy at work, but nothing too stressful. I think she developed a 
to try to can you Will the police let me back in the house? They let me take a bag of clothes with me, but. No. 1984. It was an awful year in the end. We were living at Doug and Eleanor's. I lost the baby at the end of spring, and my parents died in the summer. It was a hot summer, a heat wave. So when they discovered the bodies, it was just awful. Because of the circumstances, them dying together like that, they brought in a lot of police, a forensic entomologist. I had to look that up. It was because of the heat. We carried on living at Simon's parents until that was only a few months after. Yes. It was a shock to him. I mean, we never thought it was possible. I don't know what he... I mean, I hadn't decided whether to keep the baby. I wasn't really ready to talk to him about it.
Then my parents died. It was the worst year of my life. A miscarriage and then my parents. They'd gone to bed feeling ill, thinking it was flu or something. The neighbour called me, I had to use my key to let them in. We found them dead in their bed. And they'd been there for days, no one had noticed. Just awful. It was so soon after my miscarriage, in the worst year of my life, and I'd been so happy to get married, and after that it was just like, fuck. I was infertile. I thought I was. They told me I was infertile after the miscarriage because of complications. Hannah had a miscarriage. This was late in the pregnancy and it left her infertile. Felt like the universe had corrected its course. Yeah, you just realized that. You were aligned again. But Hannah and Simon were still living with his parents. They were married. Simon had a job at the Glaciers now. Derek had given him a full time position after he left school. And then. I got a job to contribute, you know. Doug knew someone and I got a job as a dinner lady at the primary school. They said it didn't matter if I could cook or not, just don't poison the kids. So you see, it's always been complicated between me and Simon. It's never just been the two of us, there's always been pressure. And the Glaziers. I worked there some weekends and someone had a part-time job there too. That was Eric's generosity. He was always good at helping out other people's children. Simon was quiet, more thoughtful than the other boys. Even then he had a sense of craftsmanship. It wasn't always rushing stuff. Boys that age are just running around like headless chickens most of the time. Yeah. Plus he had that look. He looked like a fairy tale prince from one of my books. <laughs> yeah, I'd be mad to Doug and Eleanor's and they're very worried. I feel sorry for them. Yeah. I'd be mad to Doug and Eleanor's and they're very worried. I feel sorry for them. Yeah. I'd be mad to Doug and Eleanor's and they're very worried. I feel sorry for them. Hoover, my dust, every week, maybe less. I once asked Eleanor how often I should dust and she said, if people ask, tell them you do it once a week, but every few weeks it's okay. 
I think she was just trying to make me feel better. I mean, when I was there, she was hoovering every day. You know, ran an ordered house. You know how that generation is putting on a brave front. Hmm. She has secret stashes of cigarettes. Doug doesn't even know she smokes. When I was there, I saw her. She has these sort of porcelain vases, ornamental, next to the Reader's Digest books. Cigarettes inside. And she still has them. I mean, last time I was there, I looked in a vase. There was a fresh pack. I mean, all those years of marriage, and she still has a secret like that. Okay. I parked up in the street. It was busy, so I had to park down the end of the road. Walked up, knocked on the door, no answer. I took my keys out of my bag and unlocked the door. The main lock was unlocked. You can tell because the key doesn't turn when you try to turn it to the left. I walked in. Simon's coat wasn't on the peg. I couldn't see his shoes in the shoe rack. I shouted out. Um, I walked straight into the kitchen because he usually sits in there to have a cup of tea and read his paper. But he wasn't there. I touched the kettle. It was cold. I looked quickly in the living room. Nothing. So I walked upstairs to the bedroom and he wasn't there. I didn't search for him because it was pretty clear he wasn't there. I had a shower. The phone rang whilst I was in the shower. I didn't answer it. I think it was Eric. Then I was just exhausted. So I lay down on the bed and I fell asleep, though I didn't mean to. I woke up a couple of hours later and I was surprised to see no one in the bed next to me. And then I remembered where I was and what had happened. That's when Eric called again. This time I spoke to him. Then I called Doug and Elena. And then I decided to come and see you. Then I Yes. I speak with Eleanor at least once a day. Not that there's anything much to say. It's more just... I was living in the attic. It was a very hard time. I was depressed, I was still pretty sick of the STD. When I came down one morning, they were dead. They were in bed and both had been sick. They'd thrown up, not. And I'd slept through it. The police said it was mushrooms they ate. Dad was a mushroom expert. He used to take us picking with him and he taught us how to recognise them. And there's no way you would have picked dead caps. But the police believe that's what happened. They never even looked in the attic. Yes, I inherited it from my parents so it made sense to move back, me and Simon. Felt like going back to old ways before the pregnancy. Reminded me of being a girl, the dollhouse in the attic, old things. We didn't sleep in my parents' bedroom for a long time. We decorated it as soon as we moved in, but it was another year before we started sleeping there. Yes, I read a lot as a child and 
watch lots of TV than the doll's house we had, we still have in the attic. It's kind of a fairy castle. We used to play out there and make up our own stories. Could the hairs have come from somewhere else? I mean, could they? We have a lot of dolls in the attic. There's a Rapunzel doll with long blonde hair. Could they have come from there? Yeah. I'm not sure where the dollhouse came from. I don't know if it was given to them or they inherited it. I mean, they wouldn't have had the money to buy it was so huge. <laughs> it must have been taken up to the attic in parts and then reassembled up there. It is a beautiful thing. Wallpaper to scale, little furniture, the lights work, mirrors, beds, big duvets and pillows. We spent hours and hours playing in it, we invented all these characters and families who lived there. We wrote paperwork for them all. Passports, diaries, we gave them all really elaborate stories. Once, a moth got trapped in there. We'd left a light on. It was making the most horrendous noise. We tried to kill it, but it was tough. We ended up crushing it under a copy of the Arabian Nights. The legal stuff was completed very quickly. Hand moved back in with Simon. Eric gave Simon the week off to help with the move. He decorated, modernised wallpaper curtains. Hannah insists the attic be left as it was, dollhouse and all. Simon never went up there. It's Rapunzel. The story starts when she's born. Mother Gothel, a witch, takes Rapunzel from her parents and keeps her locked up in this tower. Rapunzel gets pregnant by the prince, and Mother Gothel is furious, so she cuts off her hair and throws it. Actually, her hair's already short here, so that's already happened. But so she throws her into the wilderness, and Rapunzel is reunited with the prince, who's blind, but she kills him with her tears and so it's a happy ending. Is that too much? What kind of hairs? That's all. You want me to play something? I'm not the world's greatest guitar player. Okay? Probably needs tuning. No, it's okay. How about a traditional ballad? It should be right up your street. Sisters came walking by the sea. Oh, the wind and the rain. The eldest one pushed the other one in. Oh, the dreadful wind and the rain. See, they both had a love for the captain's son. But he only cared for the youngest one, all the dreadful wind. Oh, the eldest envied her sister fair, all oh, the wind. 
and under the ring With a pretty little face and a long, long tail Oh, the dreadful wind and rain So she pushed her in and held her down When she went home, Simon had a birthday tea waiting. Afterwards, she told Simon about me, told him I was pregnant. She wanted me to move in with them, this sister he didn't know she had. She knew that instant. <sighs> the look on his face. She sent him out the house, kicked him out, <laughs> called me up, crying, and I went round. I guess I had a feeling I could hear something was wrong in her voice, but I wasn't sure what it was. She called me sister on the phone. She never calls me that. My sister is gone. And she's never coming back. Because I killed her. At that time. Sure. Yes, of course, if that would help. Will you phone the house to let me know when you want to come round? Then I can make sure that I'm there. Yes. Um, I got to Glasgow. I was exhausted, so I pulled over and slept in the car. I woke up because a rubbish truck went past. I got some petrol, bought a coffee and a pastry, tried calling someone from the payphone, and then Headed back. Okay, I think she has a three different personality. Oh, I do not know. Murder. Do you need to take that few records? Nothing like this has ever happened to me before. Blood. It's probably the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Well, fine. Considering. I got back into the house today, and that was weird, knowing your people have been there through my things. It's like I've been burgled. And worse, obviously. I don't know. I haven't lived in the cellar yet. They sent a cleaner in. 
as good as new, he said. <laughs> but they had to throw some stuff out. Couldn't get the blood out. And I'm still waiting to hear from the coroner so we can get a date set for the funeral. It's going to be a cremation. So... Like I said before, it was three, something like that. I walked in, saw Simon. He was on the floor of the living room. His throat had been cut. There was a lot of blood. She was sat behind him. She had my wig on. And she'd been there all day. And she had blood on her. She was in shock.